Prior to installing your piston rings, verify your piston to cylinder wall clearance. This is done after your machine work has been completed and is just a verification for you yourself. Install the piston in the cylinder it will go in, upside down, and slide the biggest feeler gauge you can perpendicular to the piston pin at the bottom of the piston skirt. Don't force it in, it should be just a snug fit. On my engine this measurement is one thousandth of an inch. Performance built engines are somewhere closer to three or four thousandths of an inch. Too tight of a fit, too much heat, spell disaster. Remember, steel surrounded by coolant does not heat up as fast as aluminum. Make sure to read the instructions provided with your ring set. There is very valuable information in those instructions, like how to install the rings, what markings to look for, etc. Next, check ring end gap. Take some cardboard, mark circles like cylinders 1 through 8. Set the rings for each cylinder in that circle and slide one ring at a time in the top of the cylinder that they will be in when they're installed, approximately one inch down. Take a piston upside down, slide it in the cylinder to square up the ring in the cylinder bore. Then using a feeler gauge, measure the gap. My top and second ring gaps stock call for 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch and my oil ring calls for 15 to 55 thousandths of an inch. Obviously too tight of a ring end gap is not great as heat could cause engine seizure. Too loose of a ring end gap means a loss of compression, less horsepower and the need to rebuild the engine sooner. Make sure to read the markings on the rings. Read the information as you're installing from the manufacturer of the rings, how they go on the pistons. Uh, on mine, the second ring is marked top and bottom, so I gotta make sure that I put it towards top, and my upper ring can go in either direction. You buy a ring expander. Or you can do it as I'm doing it. You just need to be very gentle as you're going. So you verify you don't snap a ring. marked each one of my pistons with an arrow facing towards the front which the valve reliefs go up towards the lifter valley but it's easier when you're putting the rings on so that you know which way is the front And I'm going to gather with the uh, Chevrolet's original recommendations as to ring ends where they correspond in accordance with the pistons and for best performance and best oil control. So I'm setting up the ring gaps according to Chevrolet. You're going to use a ring expander. Don't go all the way down into the hole on the second ring. And make sure that the end of the ring is not hooked behind the piston. 
hook behind the edge of the piston, you're going to fight it all the way. You put a little bit of pressure with your thumb here, just a little bit as you're working that ring around. And then lift it up off the piston so you don't scratch the hell out of the piston on the way down. You pretty much slide right into place. They make them pretty big, so you got quite a bit of play. Just take your time and be careful. Work that ed edge of that ring off of the edge of the piston so that it can come this way as you're working your ring down into the ring gap. Or I should say there. I did check crankshaft end play and it called out for about two thousandths end play. I had actually a little less than two thousandths end play. So better to have a little less than too much in that fact. I also checked the piston to cylinder wall clearance and as I said my friend Terry had done all the machining for me, he did a wonderful job. There was about uh, two thousandths clearance on that, which it calls for about three. So it's a little tight, and that will last a little longer. I was happy with that. If you start forcing stuff, you're going to break something. Make sure to take your time and you'll be okay. You hold them in the same direction every time, that's why the arrow works out. Hold them in the same direction every time, then you're putting the rings on in the same spot every time. It's fairly easy and you do the same thing over and over again and you get used to doing it that way and, and you won't screw it up. And last, after the rings are installed on the piston, but before installing the pistons in the cylinders, check the ring side clearance by using a feeler gauge between the ring and the ring land of the piston. The spec on my engine was one to three thousandths of an inch. Always verify the specification for your own engine. Don't take someone else's word for it.